If you're looking for a challenging American classic full of beautiful, dark, striking images, I think this book is for you. Hi, I'm Maria from Read Fine Books, and today we are talking about House Made of Dawn by author Anne Scott Mamaday. I actually read this book as a suggestion from the booktuber Sean Holt. He thought of this super interesting TBR swap challenge and we actually swapped TBRs. He'll be reading what I intended to read. I read a few of the books he had on his TBR list. Check out his channel. He also reads so, so many classics and I'm glad we did this challenge. Uh, it really put me out of my comfort zone and this is the result. So let's begin. This is the story of Abel, an American Indian. We come to know from the beginning that Abel feels like a stranger in his small hometown. His mother was from there, but he didn't know who his father was. His mother dies young, so his only connection to uh, the village, to his roots, uh, remains Francisco, his grandfather. One night, inexplicably, Abel kills a man. He is caught and stands trial. He is put away for six years and uh, we get to know him again when he comes out of prison. After seven years, he is now in a relocation program in Los Angeles. He was feeling lost and lonely before, but after so long in jail, he feels the loneliness a lot more and he feels lost a lot more. It is my feeling that the book is following his journey to become part of the society again, to become a part of his village again at least. But I say that it is my feeling that that is the case because um, actually I struggled with this book very very much. To this point, I don't understand the plot of the book and I read it twice in order to be able to uh, articulate something about it. So uh, yes, I think the plot is missing, though it is beautifully written. Uh, I feel the book just sums up uh, various scenes, you know? It feels like uh, you just get into a few pages and you are simply put in a scene. Uh, it is a beautiful scene, usually very striking. You have uh, interesting imagery. Uh, the connection with nature you feel with this book is uh, very savage, very raw and uh, I like that. But for me, uh, it isn't enough. I prefer uh, character evolution more and I, I didn't feel I got that from this book. This is partly because uh, the timeline isn't linear. What I told you before is what I can gather from uh, various uh, separate scenes that uh, go throughout the book seemingly unrelated to one another. And having a non-linear timeline certainly makes things more interesting. However, um, it is also very much confusing. And uh, this confusion contributes to me not understanding characters at all. I didn't go to care about any of them. Least of all for the main character, Abel. I actually loved more Francisco, uh, Abel's grandfather, and the village priest, uh, Father Ogun. I feel they had more substance and I actually enjoyed learning their stories. As for Abel, he remains a mystery to me. And I feel that that was actually the author's purpose with his character because um, he actually never states uh, the exact reasons why Abel kills the man. He never lets us understand his reasoning uh, for any of the actions he does, even though he is the main character. 
Another thing I didn't like is his relationship to women. Actually, everyone's relationship to women in this novel seems problematic to me. They all seem very objectified. Uh, there is no real interaction with them. They are very much admired for their outside beauty, but no one actually uh, genuinely engages with any of them. All interactions with women in this novel seem like summaries you can just skip over because the feeling is that nothing matters about them. And I resented that a little bit. But Again, I think it is part of the atmosphere of the book. I think the accent in the book lies uh, between uh, man and nature. And uh, that connection is uh, very much present, very powerful here. So yes, even though I don't like it, it seems like it was intended this way. I also didn't love the dialogues in this book. They all seem very bizarre and they end abruptly. However, I feel that even though I didn't understand this uh, novel very well, that is just my limited perspective. You shouldn't disconsider it just because of that. Because uh, this is an award-winning novel. The author is an American Indian himself that makes... Uh, his writing about this very genuine. I actually loved the writing. Scenes here are, as I said, very powerful. The imagery is striking, especially the scenes around uh, hunting, for example. They are so vivid. The cruelty towards animals uh, seems so real in this book. I was shook by it. A little bit. I also am not very familiar with the American history surrounding American Indians. I know how it all began, but I definitely don't understand how the relationship evolved, how it is today and how it was when this book was written. My feeling is that the mystery was intentional, the overall message being that some things are better left undisturbed some things you may just never be able to grasp uh, because they are not part of your culture. That is why I say uh, I'm not sorry I read this book. It actually made me uh, question things, especially question if I should read it a third time because I still feel I'm missing things. So let me know what you think. Let me know if you enjoyed it or plan to read it or actually read something else from the same author. It is a book that took me out of my comfort zone as it was intended for this TBR swap challenge and I'm thankful for that. Uh, so let me know what you think as well. I'm Maria from Read Fine Books. Thank you for watching.